So what is a chemical reaction? In biology, we primarily focus on two major types of chemical reactions when we are talking about energy. One is exergonic, and one is endergonic. What do these actually mean? Well, X means out. So these are reactions that are going to release energy. Ender means in. So these are reactions that are going to require energy. With our exergonic reactions, when these occur, we look at a number of different biological processes that actually involve exergonic reactions in a normal kind of environment out in the real world. An exergonic reaction would be something like burning wood. So when you burn wood, you're releasing energy that is stored in that wood, and you're releasing it as heat and light, right? When we look at biological processes, things like this cell respiration we've been talking about, we're looking at releasing energy very slowly, and we're looking at that release of energy to actually help us build ATP. So we're taking energy from a stored form and converting it into a stored form that your cells can use. Remember we said this is only about 37 to 40 percent efficient, but it's obviously enough to sustain you, right? So in these reactions, we take something that has a lot of potential energy. Sugar has a lot of potential energy. And when we start to break it down, what we're actually going to get is energy out. So this is an exergonic reaction. Energy is released, and the products that we form from sugar are CO2, and heat. So the amount of energy that is released, we're actually going to take this and help to build ATP. So that endergonic reaction requires energy to be put in, and what we want to see is in the end, we end up with more energy stored than what was available in the original reactants. So our reactants here, we put energy in. If we're putting energy in, it is endergonic. And the energy you see is going to help us store huge amounts of potential energy in a product. And in this case, our product is ATP. So yes, it is going to take us a large amount of energy to store energy in ATP. We're going to need a lot of fuel, a lot of sugar, a lot of proteins, a lot of food to make this happen. But in the end, we have a form of energy that your cells actually recognize and can use. So an exergonic reaction, textbooks always refer to it as kind of rolling, en rolling a ball down the hill. There's a lot of energy available, and as you roll it down the hill, you lose that energy, the energy is released, and in the end, you end up with a product that has very, very little energy associated with it. So this is starting out with our sugars and ending with our CO2. Counter, we start out with something with very low energy available in it, and we're going to add energy to it so that we can have stored energy or potential energy for later on. 
So we haven't gotten this far in cell respiration yet. So instead, let's think about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the plant's ability to convert CO2 into sugars. So it's taking that very low energy product from our exergonic reaction in cell respiration and actually going to use it in photosynthesis to build sugars again. This is a very connected process, right? This is something that we will talk about a lot later as being a biological network of these exergonic and endergonic re reactions inside our bodies. We can follow a lot of these. We refer to them in chemistry as coupled reactions. So we're coupling them or putting them together to work better for us.